Hi guys, it's Nina the baby chick. I'm here back on Facebook live and I wanted to thank you guys. I had posted on Wednesday our very exciting news that we are actually pregnant and we couldn't be more excited about our pregnancy and I just can't thank each and every single one of you enough for the love and support of our video of me finding out uh, the exciting news and sharing our story and you know I, I even read several people who were kind of crying along with our video because they could completely understand what we were going through I I just can't thank you guys enough so it was such a, a joyous moment and finally hitting that 12 week mark where you can you know I felt comfortable talking about it in public and with people that I um, with friends and um, and with all of you I just felt like I had finally crossed the finish line and I can I can talk about this exciting news so we're I'm excited to share um, all of this and I I think that it's some of the people when I, I was talking about, hey, I waited till my second trimester to announce my pregnancy to the world and to um, friends and even some family. I waited <laughs> a little bit because, you know, one in five pregnancies do can end in a miscarriage. And I think that a lot of women are maybe afraid to talk about it a little bit because if they were to announce to everyone that they're pregnant and something were to happen that they would then have to explain to everyone, well, hey, this is what happened. But you know what? I also don't think that that's a bad idea. I don't think that's a bad way to go about it because it's almost as if you, if you do wait some people feel like, well, if something were to happen, then, you know, you're almost saying that this is a shameful experience and something that you should be embarrassed by and something that we shouldn't be able to talk about. And I couldn't disagree with that even, you know, more. Um, I, with, I feel that that since it's something that so many women go through, um, infertility, miscarriage, um, the loss of a child, I feel like it is something that we should talk about and support one another. And so I, I am definitely not saying that you have to wait until you are in your second trimester to share this exciting news. Um, but I felt personally more comfortable sharing something um, like that. Um, and Emily, thank you so much for joining and thank you so much um, for your sweet words. I'm, we are very excited. So uh, today I am talking about some of my secrets and other secrets that people have told me as well, how they were able to keep their pregnancy under wraps uh, so then people wouldn't find out and you know spoil the the big news so I think that the number one thing at least for me in my age group I'm 30 so uh, is when you go hang out with your girlfriends go to brunch and you're the only one not ordering a mimosa or you're at an event and you're sipping on some water and it kind of can be a little telling if especially if people know that you've been trying and have, you know, been having a hard time getting pregnant. Oh, thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you for joining. So, yeah, I, I, I thought, you know what? I, I'm going to be smart <laughs> now that uh, that I found this exciting news. And again, we found out. Um, or, you know, I, I recorded that video. Um, February 1st of taking that pregnancy test and seeing that yes mark um, I, I had to wait you know until the end of this month uh, to finally be able to announce so some of the things that I had to do again to try and avoid you know the alcohol situation is what I always did is I made sure that I got to every single event really early so when my girlfriends were like hey we're gonna get together for brunch um, I made sure that I was the very first one there so then that way I could tell the waiter, say, hey guys, I just want you to know, so I'm pregnant and my girlfriends are not and I, they're going to be ordering cocktails or a mimosas or whatever and because you have dollar mimosas, Alicia, hubby couldn't keep it hush hush good for you guys. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's hard. Kids also have a hard time keeping those secrets too. So yeah, when it's such exciting news, it's hard to kind of hold it in. So I understand. And thank you so much, Anna Marie. I appreciate it. But yeah, so as I was saying, 
it can be difficult. So I would go to the restaurant or whatever event place first and make sure that I told the person who was serving the drinks, hey, can you make sure that you make my mimosa look exactly like the other mimosas that you're going to be giving my girlfriends and just make it a virgin mimosa? So then that way, you know, it doesn't look suspicious. And always they were like, oh my gosh, congratulations. Of course, we will, you know, take care of all of this for you. So then that way, whenever I, you know, had my girlfriends show up and we sat and had drinks, they had no idea that I was having a virgin mimosa while they were all enjoying you know the real thing and I did the same thing with another group of friends I got there first and ordered a virgin Bloody Mary and it looked like the real deal so I was not getting any questions <laughs> with that as well so that's something that I definitely recommend is you know getting there early to any event and if you do go to an event and it's a bigger event and they have maybe a bartender in a bar and it's harder to have that alone time with a bartender I think that um, trying to order your own drinks um, by yourself so then no one kind of hears you Susan thanks for joining oh you're so sweet I I couldn't we couldn't be happier to love you and thank you so much um, so yeah so whenever I uh, if there was like an event to go to I think going by yourself to the bartender and saying like hey can you get me a sprite with like a lime or a lemon or something and then it'll look like you have you know a a vodka soda or you know even if you get um, tonic water uh, whatever it is um, it, it looks like a, a fancy a fancy cocktail no one's gonna be questioning you I do recommend though drink it slowly like you would an actual cocktail because if you're chugging all of these sprites or you know sparkling waters or tonic waters people are gonna be like wow this girl you know she can she can <laughs> keep her liquor down so um, kind of slow it down with the drinking um, and and also, if you do have, um, you know, your spouse with you and someone's giving you a drink, you know, just pretend like you're sipping on it and hand it over to your husband and be like, here you go, honey. Um, and people are not so self, you know, there's people are kind of self-absorbed a little bit. They're not going to be paying extra attention to every little thing that you are doing if you're drinking your cocktail or not. So if you just, you know, pretend that you're sipping here and there and maybe go to the sink and um, drop a little bit down the drain or give some to your husband, it, you know, people will not be any the wiser. So that's another way to kind of get around the alcohol situation. Um, another thing which would never work for my friends because I'm, you know, <laughs> I wish I would work out more. I wish I was a lot, you know, healthier. I, I try, I, I do, but I need to try harder on that. I'm gonna be honest. I'm being honest with you guys. And so if I were to say, hey guys, yeah, I'm going on a cleanse right now and I'm not drinking any alcohol, they would call me on my crap immediately and be like, you're a liar, what's going on? <laughs> There's no way that that's really happening. So if I maybe blamed it on my husband because he is so uh, fitness oriented and really um, athletic and fit, maybe that would have been a little bit more believable than like, yeah, Brian's just, you know, making us go on a cleanse. So maybe if something like that, that would be more believable. But um, for me, that lie, that white lie, these are white lies, you know, it's for the greater good. Um, that white lie would not work in my scenario at all. So, um, but that is something that you could, you could do. One thing that I actually did do I went to an event and I actually said, you know what, I am so hungover guys, I just, oh, looking at alcohol just makes me sick, I love you, but no, I, I just can't, like water, I need to hydrate, thank you so much. And I just pretended like I had a headache and you know, I still enjoyed my time and was a, a you know, a pleasant guest, but if anyone offered me something, I'd be like, Ooh, overdid it last night, can't do it. And people, you know, people are usually respectful of that and don't think anything anything more after you, you let them know. So I did use that one time and it worked like a charm. So that's another way to kind of get around um, a drink. So something else um, uh, that I, you could also use is, hey, I'm actually the designated driver. You know, I'm, 
hanging out with my girlfriends and um, you know I'm I'm gonna be or maybe you're with your husband hey I you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be driving him home so I have to work maybe really early tomorrow or I have to actually work later tonight I have a bunch of you know things that are due so you know what it's best if I just not drink so I'm the DD so that's another way to kind of get around it Haley said I was lied to and it was worth it girl <laughs> yes you were sorry love you <laughs> anyway so um so yeah i is saying that you're the designated driver that's another way to go about it people might say oh get an uber get a taxi or whatever but be like you know we're saving our money and we're trying to be smart and i actually have to work um tomorrow or um later tonight so you know what it's okay i'm 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 good. So that's another way to kind of get around the alcohol situation. So there's got to be a way for you guys, if you're at an event or meeting up with friends or family or whatever, there are ways to kind of get around it. I have had some friends that also, you know, use the whole, I'm on antibiotics right now. And so it just, they won't recommend me drinking any alcohol. So not until I'm done with my round of antibiotics can I have a cocktail. So that's another way to kind of get around that. Julie said, I kept my pregnancy a secret for all six weeks with family. Oh my gosh, girl, that's impressive. Um, at my husband's Christmas party, and I ordered cranberry and club soda to look like I had a mixed drink. Genius, girlfriend. And that's so true. Club soda with cranberry juice, it looks like the real deal. So no one will be the wiser. So I love that. Thanks for joining, Julie, and thanks for the tip. Love that. So anyway, um... And the last thing that I put on, like trying to get around, um, you know, the alcohol situation is telling maybe a friend. I actually had a girlfriend who was pregnant, newly pregnant at my bachelorette party. So it was difficult for her to <laughs> kind of get away from the jello shots and, you know, <laughs> all of the cocktails. So she had told a friend. And so the friend just made sure to kind of, you know, take care of her and hold her story and, um, you know, take a couple extra drinks for her. <laughs> and so then that way she didn't have to worry about it. And it was just nice for her to not feel like she's hiding it from a whole group of girls. Um, so that made it a lot easier for her. So if, yeah, you're at a wedding or something where it's a little bit more difficult to get away with, um, you know, saying no to all of the drinks, um, having one confidant that can kind of, you know, keep your story hidden, um, that's that's a way great way to get around it Julie said no one noticed at all yeah exactly that's that's the perfect way to do it hiding that she said my mom uh, was pregnant at my bachelorette party oh oh your maid of honor I thought you said your mom I was like oh my god girl <laughs> that's that's impressive um, needless to say everyone found out oh <laughs> yeah exactly at the bachelorette party it's harder to kind of get away with those things but um, again if you did what my friend did she just had one of her girlfriends who was also there, not my mom, um, she, your maid of honor. Yes, I corrected myself. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, if she just had a friend that said, hey, you know, she's good or, you know, she pretends like she takes a drink but gives it to one of the girls, it was fine. So anyway, those are some tips on how to kind of get around the whole alcohol situation. If you guys have some other tips or things that worked for y'all, I would love to know. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is when your clothes get a little bit tighter and you're still not ready to tell the big news and you're not sure what to wear or how to get around that. So I obviously don't recommend wearing anything that is form-fitting or tight showing your figure if you're already noticing a little bit of a baby bump. Um, I have been wearing a little bit more looser tops and if I've been feeling a little bit more bloated or <laughs> like something looks a little off. So just nice flowy tops, flowy dresses, baggy clothes, Crystal said. Yes, so it's something that's baggy or flowy, something, it, you don't have to feel like you're wearing a tent or, you know, a huge oversized maternity clothes. I mean, you're you know, in your first trimester, but everyone's bodies are different. Some people don't show, but especially with subsequent babies, your body does show sooner than it did with your first baby. So, so trying to hide that also wearing black, it's very slumming. I recommend that. And also layering. I think that a great jacket, if you have a cute jean jacket or a scarf, if it's, you know, 
weather appropriate. A big oversized bag really kind of makes you look smaller in comparison to the big bag or a cute kimono or just think of layering smart or like a really good statement necklace that really takes the focus away from your bump up to you know your face and your and your statement necklace or statement earrings nice jewelry Julie said I wore a lot of Empire waist things yes that's so right uh, making it cinch right at your waist and then it flows out so then nothing is clinging to your midsection and showing hey there's a little there's a little baby in here so um, those were some of the things um, that I was doing also there's this great tip that if you have tighter jeans so I was actually having this problem with some of my jeans not all of them but some of them um, where I was thinner <laughs> they were able I was able to get them on and zip them up but I wasn't able to button them so what I did is I got one of my hair ties and I put it through the belt loop and made it tie. So I'm gonna try and show you guys here. Um, so I don't know if I can get this to work. Sorry that you're looking like at my crotch, but here's my button and belt loop. So what you do with this is you stick this through, stick this around your belt loop, and then you can stick this right through. And then it gives you a lot more space to grow without having to buy new new pants, maternity pants, or sh be obvious that, you know, you had to get something brand new. Sorry, like I said, you had to kind of awkward angle. But I wanted to show what also helps me so then I could still wear some of my cute things without feeling completely out of it. I did the hair tie all the time. Brandy, yes fist pump for sure. Hi from Arkansas. I didn't find out until I was like 12 weeks. Oh, that is so nice. You didn't have any nausea or any of that girl. I'm super jealous. Um, and Kara said everyone knew by the time I was 10 weeks, apparently for your third pregnancy, you show. That's so true. Like I said, subsequent babies, you know, you show a lot faster. And Julie said, I did the hair tie trick forever. So I didn't have to put away my favorite jeans. Now I'm 20 weeks uh, with number two. And that is not an option anymore. Again, yeah, second, third, fourth babies, you know, you grow a little bit more. So that's completely normal. You're not the only ones. But yeah, the hair tie trick is great. If you haven't heard of it, I just showed you. Rewatch this video. So I did that a couple of times on some of my cute, cute pants. And I wanted to wear them. So that's another way to kind of get around. Around, um, you know showing your bump so the other thing I was saying is um, one of our viewers were saying oh my husband kind of told the news um, I don't recommend telling children um, oh Chelsea said currently doing the hair tie trick two months postpartum girl you're that's that's awesome that two months postpartum you're already putting your pre-pregnancy um, clothes back on I know some mamas that you know cling on to that stuff for, <laughs> for a while so way to go that's awesome I'm probably gonna be doing the same thing for a lot longer so <laughs> after I have this little baby, but awesome. Thanks for joining Chelsea. Um, so yeah, so I was saying with children, if you have a talkative child and they are at the age where they're old enough, obviously to talk, but young enough to not really understand the concept of a secret, I don't recommend telling them the exciting news that they are going to be a big brother or a big sister because they are probably going to be sharing that news with all of their little friends and then their friends tell their mommies and their little, you know, teachers, all of that. So if if you want it to kind of stay under wraps, I do recommend waiting until you are ready to announce the news with your little one. Or at least tell them, a, you know, maybe a few days before, do something special with them. Um, so then they feel like they're in on the secret. But then if it's if it's out, then oh well, it's you're about to announce it anyway. Melissa said, my husband told the news the first time I told him. I won't tell him next time. <laughs> oh, Melissa, hey, you're not the only one. So, you know, there are plenty of other people who have said the same thing so um, but yeah probably the smart thing if you're wanting to, to kind of keep under wraps so another thing obviously I mean just lay low during your pregnancy if you are tired which that's what I was feeling my first trimester I was nauseous I was tired I was winded I was moody sorry and 
for certain things, I just said, you know what? I can't go to that. I'm not feeling well. And you know, you're not lying. You're you're being you're being truthful. Don't feel like you have to do everything that you were doing before. It's okay to lay low because you are taking care of you and you're taking care of your baby. So don't feel pressured to to go to every single thing that you've been going to before. Like if you and your friend do a daily run or something, you know, say like, hey, I've just come down with the flu or I just haven't been feeling well lately. Um, I, I just, I think I really need to rest and, and take care of me right now. People will understand. Um, again, those kind of white lies though, um, sometimes if people know that you have been trying, they, they may be guessing. And I actually had some people who flat out asked me, are you pregnant? And I said, nope, no because I just, I wasn't ready to talk about it yet. And I did feel a little bit guilty, but you know what? I think that now that they know, they probably understand and you know, it's, you can share that news when you feel it's ready, whether, when you feel you're ready, whether that is when you immediately found out and you want to tell everybody, great. Um, but if you want to wait a little bit, you know, that's okay too. You shouldn't feel pressured to share the news, you know, too soon or too late. It's it's when you feel is best for you and your family and your baby. So there really is no wrong answer. And I had someone actually who commented on my my pregnancy announcement video. Um, Hannah said, "Oi, the first trimester fatigue, no fun, girl. I feel ya. I've been wanting to take naps at work. Is that wrong? Is that? Uh, I mean, I haven't." but I've wanted to, so yeah. Julie said, I didn't tell anyone until after the first trimester. Trimester, I get it. Yeah, so thank you, you get it. You're right there with me. So, but again, you know, everyone, everyone's a little different. I know some people who have announced, you know, immediately after, and I completely support that decision because again, if something were to happen, I feel like that's so brave of them that maybe other people can feel strong enough to talk to them about, hey, I went through a miscarriage too. Um, I, I've experienced infertility. I have a rainbow baby. I have, you know, all of these different things because I'm a big, I'm a big believer that, you know, we're this sisterhood of mothers. The sisterhood of motherhood is very strong and we need to be able to support each other and, and, you know, not everything works out exactly the way we want it to. And again, I was just so overwhelmed with all of the support that everyone was giving me because yeah, I've, we've wanted a, a child for a while and we're very excited to now be expecting this little one. So I just wanted to make sure that I could share some of the things that, you know, especially in the business that I'm in, I work with pregnant women and people who have just had babies um, every day. And we talk to brands of, of baby brands and all of that. So it's been really difficult keeping this secret. A secret. It's been probably one of the hardest secrets to keep. But, um, and some of my friends were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you didn't tell me. But I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready yet. So I hope that all of my loved ones um, understand that. Crystal said, the hardest part is hiding it at work, especially because you're around them four days a week, nine hours a day. You're so right. And Crystal, for people who are at work, again, the layering thing, really smart. So flowy skirts, or not flowy skirts, but looser skirts, nice jackets, big oversized bag, um, a big statement necklace that'll take away from the bump wearing the color black. I love wearing black, it makes me look thinner. Um, but also at work, having snacks, having peppermints, uh, peppermint oil, having ginger, water with you, having a fan, things that you can kind of take care of yourself um, and try not to show the fatigue and um, the constant, I'm already going to the bathroom more than I used to, it's weird. Um, but it's maybe then not as obvious. So at work it is a little bit harder to hide that, but you know, hopefully, you know, there are some things that you can do to also keep yourself comfortable and still keep that a secret. But anyway, guys, I just wanted to share 
with you those tips. Thank you so much for joining. I'm again elated with this new um, pregnancy and sharing it with all of y'all and having all of your support. And I wanted to explain, you know, why we waited uh, to to share the good news and how we've been able to do it. So I hope this has been helping all of you guys too. So anyway, we also, if you guys are in the Houston area, I am going to be at the Houston Baby and Kids show. So it's this Sunday and I'm actually going to be talking about the hottest uh, baby and uh, parent uh, products. Sorry, the hottest baby and parent products for 2017. So I have some really cool things that I'm going to be showing all of the visitors. So if you're in town, you should stop by, check it out. Um, we're going to have a booth there as well. So um, and I'm just so honored to also be one of their speakers. So uh, very excited. Tiana said, thank you for this. Congrats. Thank you so much. And Maribel, you're awesome girl. Congrats. You're awesome girl. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for joining. Also, I'll be doing another video on Tuesday to show a really cool product that I found out. So I don't think you're going to want to miss it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much. Hope you have a fabulous weekend and I will see you soon. Bye.